Hey everybody, Adam Repos Vox here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to modify your PlayStation 2 to run games and ROMs off of the internal hard drive. For this video, you will need a fat original PlayStation 2. No, this will not work with the slim PlayStation 2. No, I will not answer your questions on how to do it. If you want to try to engineer your own adapter to hook up a hard drive to the slim PlayStation 2 in place of the disk drive, go right ahead, but if you're able to do that, you don't need my help. So you need a fat, PlayStation, fat original PlayStation 2, you need the PlayStation 2 network adapter, which allows you to hook up an internal hard drive. You can get it for about $10 or less on Amazon. You need an IDE hard drive. This connects with the old ribbon cables. This is what the PlayStation 2 network adapter used because of its age. And so you need an IDE hard drive. Uh, you can get them up to two terabytes. In theory, you could get a SATA to IDE adapter to work. However, there are specific compatibilities of what will work and what won't work, and it's just a mess to get it to work. So go get a $20 IDE hard drive off Amazon. You will need a flash drive. You will need an empty PlayStation 2 memory card, and you will need a connection adapter set up to connect that IDE hard drive to your computer via USB just for a couple steps. You will also need some of the software, the software, which links will be in the description below. So for step one, you will be using the program called WinHip, which is a disk formatting utility and the only program that I've ever found that recognizes PlayStation 2 formatted hard drives. So you're going to want to connect your IDE hard drive to your computer via USB or direct plug-in and make sure your computer recognizes it. You're going to use that WinHip program and select your drive. Uh, you go ahead and in Windows, go ahead and rename it to be called PS2. Why not? Rename it to PS2, find that hard drive within WinHip. Go up to go up to select drive and choose your PS2 hard drive. You should also be able to recognize it by size because it should probably it should probably be a lot smaller than your other hard drives in your system. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you will probably need to be running this on Windows 7 versus Windows 8.1. On Windows 8.1, you first need to disable driver enforcement and then run the program as administrator. And for me, that still didn't work. So I ran it on Windows 7, ran it as administrator, and it worked fine. First, you're going to format the hard drive as Toxic OS. Go ahead and format it and let it do its thing. And then format it again as HDL48, Hard Drive Loader 48-bit. This is going to allow you to use your whole hard drive and access games for a bigger hard drive that's bigger than 250 gigabytes, or no, bigger than 150 gigabytes, and allow you to use the PlayStation build that I'm putting the link for in the description below. Next, once that's formatted and done, go ahead and close WinHip for now. Open up the program HD Copy Portable and go to Copy Image to Drive, choose your target drive as that PlayStation 2 hard drive and choose your source image as the image file for the PlayStation 2 48-bit image build that, again, link will be in the description below. This is made by a fellow named Vash32 over on the ISOZone forums. He's who I use most of my guides from, but a lot of his guides were very, very hard to fully process, so that's why I'm putting together my own updated one. Once the image is copied, close HD Copy Portable, reopen WinHip, and go to Scan Repair, and do a full scan, and then it's going to ask you to hit Repair, and do a full repair run on your drive. This does defragmentation and a couple other things just to make sure that it's in optimal condition for the PS2 to actually recognize it. Now most of your hard drive work here is done. Next you're going to want to use the ESR program to patch your PS2 ROMs. I'm not going to tell you where to get these, technically acquiring ROMs of games that you do not have is illegal, so I'm not going to help you with that process. I'm going to assume you already have those and you just want to know how to run them on your PS2. Take your ROMs, they need to be in ISO or I believe in 6G format and just drag and drop them onto the ESR patcher. This is going to patch them to be recognized by your, the HD loader software on the PS2 as official Sony files. Just drag and drop, it'll tell you that either they patched or they didn't patch. If it doesn't patch, it'll either say that you don't have a UDF key, which 
I honestly don't have a solution for at the moment. Or it'll tell you that it's already been patched, in which case you're good to go. Patch all of your ROMs that same way, and then once you're done, go ahead and close the ESR program. Now use the WinHIP program again to go ahead and select your PS2 drive and add images. And this is where you're going to add the ISO files of your PS2 ROMs to your hard drive. Just go ahead and select them all and it'll automatically determine the best settings for it. And so it'll detect that it needs to be a DVD, not a CD and all that jazz. And it'll copy it over. It'll take a while because IDE hard drives are slow and USB is slow. So let it take its time to copy the files. But once it's done copying and installing them, you can go ahead and close WinHIP. Next, you're wanting to copy over the hard drive loader game installer files to a flash drive. It's going to be an ELF file with some other files next to it. Once that's copied, go ahead and unplug everything from your computer. Install the hard drive into your PS2 via the network adapter. It, you take off a plate on the back of the PS2, just simply slide the hard drive onto the PlayStation network adapter with the Molex and IDE connections there, and then slide the network adapter and hard drive into your PlayStation 2 and screw it on. Plug the flash drive into the front USB port on the PS2. Make sure there's no disk in your PS2 and go ahead and boot it up. Ideally, when you lo load the browser, if you hit triangle, it should say browser version 2.00. And then if you actually hit browser, it'll show you your hard drive and you're able to click that and view some of the programs and things like that on your hard drive. Now, this is going to come with a PS1 game called Gradius. Uh, Gradius Gaiden, I believe. And you can play that literally from the menu, but then your other ROMs are either going to show up as corrupted data or just their file names. You cannot actually o open these from the menu. You will have to use HD Loader or Open PlayStation Loader to run your games. But first, we must do one more step to just kind of verify and install them using the HD Loader game installer that we copied to the flash drive. Use the ULaunch ELF program on the hard drive menu to copy that file to a memory card. So open ULaunch ELF and go down to mass. And that's mass storage, that is your flash drive. Once you find the HDLG1 folder, hit R1, and that's gonna pull up your menu. And then remember for ULaunch ELF and a lot of these programs, circle is actually your select button. Whereas most games and programs for the PlayStation 2 in the United States, X is your select button. These are based on the older Japanese code, which uses plus or uh, uses circle as the select button. So hit circle and go ahead, go ahead and tell it to copy that folder. So R1 and go to copy on that folder. Now hit triangle until you're back at the main menu of the ULaunch ELF and go up to MC0. This should be the me empty memory card that you have plugged into your PlayStation. Open that up and then hit R1 and hit paste. And that's gonna copy that program folder over to your memory card. Once it's copied over, open that folder and hit circle on the ELF file. It should be called HD Loader Game Installer.elf, something like along those lines. Hit circle and it should open the program. You do actually need to copy this to a memory card or it will not run. It will not run from your flash drive or the hard drive for some reason. Launch it from your memory card via the ULaunch ELF program and it should like restart your PlayStation 2 and open the game. 
and then simply go through your different ROMs and rename them. You can use see the menu screen menu options on screen, select your ROM, go ahead and rename it. You have three different name fields. They show up in different places in the user interface and go ahead and adjust them. The ROMs are going to give them really goofy names and just some random characters for names and things like that. And even if it has the name that you want, you still have to edit it and hit save or it won't work. It won't open in HD loader. So go ahead and give them some cleaned up names and make sure all the settings are right. And once you're done with the names, just kind of hit next and you don't want to change the game's icon and hit next until it goes away. Do that for all of your ROMs and you're good to go. Next, go ahead and open up the HD loader program from your browser menu or the open PlayStation loader program and that will allow you to run your games and you're good to go. Ooh, that was a lot. Let's just say I spent a, a good portion of a week of my spare time trying to figure out how to get this to work. This is actually the easiest way to soft mod a PlayStation 2 because it requires no MC boot installing. You don't got to do any crazy things with game sharks or memory cards or hacks or flash chips or anything like that. You literally just copy these files to your hard drive and run them and it works, which is absolutely amazing. But it took me forever to dig through all the tutorials and guides that people wrote be it 10 years ago or recently because they're all vague or assume that you know what's going on already. So I tried to make this guide to make it a bit clearer on how to do this. I will post all the links to all the different software programs you will need for this in the description below. I'm going to use my own Mega or Dropbox uploads for this that way you have a for sure to work copy. But I will also post the links to all the tutorials I used as my sources so that way you can go view Vash's tutorial, you can ask him if you have any questions because I'm probably not going to be able to answer them. And you can get his original downloads just in case mine aren't working at some point in the future. Also, he posts regularly and even responded to my own private messages. So he's very active on the ISO zone. So he'll be able to help you out or may have updated tutorials in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope you got to play some games off your hard drive. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Leave us a comment telling us why. Check out link in the description below to our Patreon campaign where you can support us via a monthly contribution as well as our social media, etc. And I will see you in a future video.